Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're in Kennel Vale near Pond Snooth. <laughs> Today we're in Kennel Vale. It is the home of a huge gunpowder works from the 19th century. We're going to explore that and help explain some of its history. Also, we'll give a nod to the paranormal events that may have been captured here recently. What's that? Hmm? It's a dog. Did you hear that? It's a dog. This wooded valley is Kennel Vale near Pond Snooth. It's got a lot of history and we're here today to explore the valley and explain some of that history which in more recent times has given rise to quite a lot of ghost phenomena. Supposedly haunted. The most haunted woodland in Cornwall. The woodland today is run by the Wildlife Trust. Has lots of nice paths all laid out. It doesn't, rem I don't remember this at all from my childhood. It was more of a, an abandoned woodland. We used to bring the kids here when they were really young, didn't yeah. we? But, um, yeah, I think it's been laid out a bit better than when we used to come years ago. Probably better managed now as well for wildlife. Yeah. So it gets very busy at the weekends. We're not here at the weekend. No. And hopefully it won't be too busy. So what I understand about Kennel Vale was that the site here was a form of gunpowder works and it sort of started off in the early 1800s and the reason for that was gunpowder was really important in the mines they would obviously use that to be able to extract the tin and the copper and to, to use it underground and it cost a lot of money to bring the gunpowder into the county so they found ways of actually manufacturing it more locally for the mines. There is loads of information online about Kennel Vale, one or two videos as well about paranormal investigation Today we want to do more of the gunpowder history, gunpowder works that used to be here in the 1800s. To help us out with the history today, we have a view from Carnmarth by Bob Acton. In walk three, he explores Kennel Vale and it says here, as you walk along the path from the main entrance, you'll catch glimpses of Kennel House in the valley bottom. Most of the 1812 works was in what is now the private garden of the house and little remains to be seen. After a few hundred yards, the first sizeable building on the left was a packing house. The old doorway there years ago. So this looks like the first building you had arrived at. So maybe this was the site office. So this is the very first building that Bob is suggesting it's a packing house. Do you think that makes sense? Yeah, I think it does. So it's a shame you can't get in. It's obviously all fenced off there, but um, we're looking at gunpowder. Now, they're going to try and be trying, you know, trying to restrict any possible... Um, Spark. Sparks, aren't they? Of course, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're dealing in the days of horse and cart and things like that. So probably horses would have come up to the packing house where the gunpowder would be in barrels to be loaded onto carts to be taken away. And onto so, the trains for the so mines. It does potentially make sense it's the first building you come to. It really does, actually, doesn't it? So I guess any visitors into the valley would have to be tightly controlled, wouldn't they? What about horses' hooves? What would sparks, you yeah. mean? Yeah, they probably would have been, wouldn't they? Because there's been a a lot of explosions that happened here over yeah. the years and, and some of them were fatal and, and this is what's alluded to the fact that this place is haunted. I'm going to take a lot of still shots today because yeah. uh, people have actually captured images of like shadow figures here and apparently there's been um, people have heard sort of you know, yeah. the sounds, muffled sounds of engineering and explosions and things like that. <laughs> so. It's a fairly windy day today, but it's still in this in here, isn't it? It's surrounded by trees and huge granite pieces here. Yeah, <laughs> like the one behind you. I that know. It's huge. It just goes up, doesn't it? This is the perfect location, as far as the gunpowder works was concerned, for that era. The trees actually were an advantage, and the granite—they built big walls just in case there was an accident, and they could contain any blast that that happened. And I think here we have one of those walls that was made, very roughly constructed. The 
fast flowing stream, the River Kennel, was also hugely advantageous. It ran all of the water wheels and they created a leak that fed them all, 39 in total, for the manufacture of gunpowder. When the mining industry waned, the gunpowder works became obsolete and in this valley it became a quarry and they quarried a little bit further up to the left here. So these concrete buildings, the newer buildings, are more to do with the quarry than the gunpowder works. We're going to go up to the quarry in a minute beautifully filled with water now and the most fantastic reflections hoping on a day like today with the sun dappled shade coming through the trees it should look fabulous I've tried to find out where the stone that was quarried from here was used I couldn't find anything the obvious thing to me is Brunel's viaduct on the Falmouth Truro branch line. There's a couple of huge viaducts. There's one here over the kennel and then there's one at Bizzo. But from what I can discover online that came from a quarry closer to May Burnt House. So I don't know where this stone went. It's intriguing. What have you found? Well, some old metal work down here. Oh yeah. I'm not sure what it is. It might be like a sort of rail. Do you think they it? had rails down no, here? No, it may, may well have done because it was for the, the quarry, large... wasn't it? it? Makes sense. Stones. So over here, it's just what you'd expect in the middle of a woodland, isn't it? A load of taps and pipes yeah. and oh my goodness, are they all all rusted over? They don't move anymore. I give haven't tried a, them yet. Give one a go. Well, what happens if a little water comes out? We'll get wet. I don't want to be held responsible for that. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, pretty. pretty yeah, they're rusted over. Need aren't a they? bit of WD-40 on that. Is right, that but... is that your yeah. verdict? But come and have a look down here as well. Look. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a it's a rail. It's a rail, isn't it? Yes. Ah. Yeah. yeah. So you must have had um, carts and wagons and stuff coming up for the quarry. Yeah. But you, as you said, the quarry came after the gunpowder works. Didn't yes. It? Did you see in the building down there? There was a date scribbled onto no. the wall. No. Uh, 1936. Oh, that ties in with it, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, perfect. So the buildings here are more modern. Before we leave the quarry area, look, there's another big granite wall just in the middle of nowhere and heaps of discarded granite, so I guess that wasn't up to standard, had too many faults, wouldn't be used. Big pieces, aren't they? They're huge. Go and give us some scale and stand by one. <laughs> like that. I do so love having a small amount of understanding when you come to a ruined site like this, an old industrial site, and you can kind of have a more educated guess at what the buildings were used for. I love it, love it, absolutely love it. That's some bolt in it, look at that. Another great big granite wall out there. So I guess that is supporting that theory that it was surrounded by granite walls to contain any accidents or blasts. walking through yeah. daylight sunshine's there it's yeah. a lovely day do you feel intimidated does it feel eerie it doesn't actually i mean people have no. commented that when they've been here they felt as if they're being watched no, and I felt that, no i you? haven't not yet but we're now going to go over the little bridge towards the older buildings and the mills where and the that accidents type of thing. happened yeah um so whether yeah. that feeling changes i don't know let's go and see The process of making gunpowder was quite complicated. Obviously they had to make sure there was no sparks or triggers that once the compound was put together it didn't blow up before they actually sold it. In this book there is a lot of detail about how gunpowder was actually made in the 1800s and I'll just read out a little bit of it here. 
the raw materials, which were charcoal, saltpetre and sulphur, mixed in a rotating wooden barrel in a mixing house and taking to an incorporating mill where the mixture was dampened and ground to a fine powder between two millstones. Then it went to a press house to be compressed into a cake about an inch thick. Next to this, it was broken using wooden mallets into lumps in a breaking down house, then reduced to granules in a corning house, dried by means of pipe steam in a gloom stove and separated from dust in a dusting house. So you get the idea, there's lots of processes in making the gunpowder and all of these terms they probably mean as much to you as they do to me, which is very little, but at least it, um, it helps to explain why we're going to see so many buildings in this valley. It's quite impressive, isn't it? Yeah. So, so it's a very small, tall building. But what is impressive is the machinery that's still here. People are scratching names and stuff on the walls, look. Some Welsh blokes been here, look. Some bloke called Guy who came here. Are you sure? What? It's not like a message. <laughs> right, thumbnail time, Sarah. How are we going to make people watch this video? What was that? Hmm? It's a dog. Did you hear that? It's a dog. No, seriously, did you hear that? No, what did you hear? Oh, There's nobody else here. Okay, you sure? It what must did, be another family out What there, did you hear? I, I just thought I heard some footsteps or something. Okay, don't say that. Yeah, there's nobody else here, you was right there. Nobody else. Just must have got a bit spooked. Silly, really. It's a load of nonsense. Can't go in this one, it's all overgrown. And yet again, we have another leet. So this would have been the water wheel shaft. Oh, I feel a bit dizzy, a bit giddy. Look at that, Donna. Ah, so the lower leet is taking the water away. That's probably its purpose, isn't it? go down some steps and cross that leap and there's more buildings further down there's so much here to see taking photos isn't he right let's see if we can get down these steps oh you can go in here we can go in here okay ah okay so I wonder if that one water wheel drove both sets of machinery, whatever was in here, on this granite table. So there must be more machinery in here. There's big, yeah. I don't know, things have been cut away from here, aren't there? There's big have, bolts and... Do you get the impression that there was an upstairs? Because there's, there's a door from up there, isn't there? And it's double height. You've got apertures that presumably were windows. And whatever was going on down here, you kind of walked over the top. Maybe there was a hole, like a, a mill, like a flower mill. Millstones, we should be looking for the millstones as well. He mentioned millstones, didn't he? He did. Oh, that's exciting. I'm not entirely sure, but that might be the remains of one of the old uh, millstones, perhaps. Sarah? I think I've captured a shadow figure. Whoa, 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 look, 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 look. That's what I think of your shadow figure, it's you, you know. 
Hang on. Oh yeah, it's me, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. As we moved down through the valley, the buildings kept emerging through the trees and we lost count of how many we passed. Pairs of buildings separated by their water wheel shafts. In various states of ruination, heavy with the past secrets. The atmosphere became more and more laden with the echoes of the past and our thoughts, instead of trying to make sense of it all, started to drift towards the many fatal accidents that had happened here. It became increasingly more difficult to remain upbeat. I've kind of lost track of what each building was meant to be according to Bob's description but we weren't quite sure that it still looks the same. It just gave you a sense that every building had a separate purpose. And we're still seeing more as we're going down through the valley. On the inside of the building, Andrew, look, you can see the plaster on the wall. Apparently, it was um, a special plaster that was meant to reduce cement or gunpowder dust and reduce the number of accidents as well. That is something that did happen here. Wasn't it? There are records of a number of explosions, and some people did lose their lives, leaving wives with children to support. Yeah, I think it said that over the years there were six deaths here. The first known fatality at Kennel Vale was in February 1826. An old woman named Elizabeth Rutter came to the mixing house with a basket of hot roast potatoes for the three men working there. A spark ignited the raw gunpowder mix and the resulting explosion killed Elizabeth and one of the men. A terrible and dramatic accident happened in May 1838 when five mills blew up in succession. The explosions were so powerful that part of a roof was found a mile from the premises. One man was seriously injured and another killed, leaving a widow and up to ten children. Some of the bodies as well, when it actually recovered the bodies, they were decapitated and limbs were missing and things like that. It's horrendous really, isn't it? Yeah. Perhaps something was watching us from those windless buildings, trapped in time. So have you had that sense that you're not know, being watched? A little bit, I must admit, yeah. Yeah. So I thought it was me though. So we're now going to leave this beautiful but somewhat eerie place with the echoes of the past and all the buildings, aren't we? It's fabulous, isn't it? I like what they've done here. You've actually yeah. got access to all of these buildings and they've did the little bridges that they've put yeah. in, the little walkways and it doesn't take much to imagine what it was we know what it would have been like here all those years ago yeah, i agree and i suppose it could feel a bit spooky in here it's a wood Maybe at the at end of night. the day night what are you suggesting sarah i'm not coming back here at night if that's what you're thinking is that what you're thinking i think i've got some batteries on from a torch might come back later <laughs> have a nose see what's going on i'm not coming back here if you come to kennel fail and you do experiencing it anything weird Put it in the comments, let us know. After our visit, we found more information about this fascinating place on a website called cornishmining.org.uk. So I've had a good look through these photos, Sarah. The ones we took at Kennel Vale. I can't see anything odd in them, to be honest with you. No. No. Do you think you've ever seen anything paranormal? In next week's video, Andrew persuades me to go back to Kennel Vale in the dark. <gasps> oh God! What? Did you yeah, I did actually. Yes, and then what was that? <laughs> what? Here we go. Have you ever captured something on camera and you're not sure what it is?